There are two types of respiration aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Now let's start with the first one aerobic respiration. So this is a process whereby food substances are chemically broken down in order to release energy. This has to be done in the presence of oxygen. Now there are three products from aerobic respiration and these are number one energy. Energy is going to be in form of ATP adenosine triphosphate. We will also have carbon four oxide and water being produced. Now this can be summarized using the following chemical equation. Aerobic respiration occurs in two stages, the first stage being glycolysis and the second stage Krebs cycle. Now of course any discussion that involves aerobic respiration has to include a mention of these two stages. So let's discuss them a bit. So glycolysis is the first stage of aerobic respiration. Now where does it occur? It occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now this does not require oxygen. So what happens in glycolysis? Glucose molecules are broken down in order to form pyruvic acid and two molecules of ATP. The Krebs cycle is the second stage of aerobic respiration. Now where does it happen? It occurs in the mitochondria, specifically in the matrix of the mitochondria. Now this stage requires oxygen. Now in this stage, pyruvic acid, which was formed in the first stage, is oxidized. This simply means that it reacts with oxygen in order to form carbon four oxide, water and ATP specifically 38 molecules of ATP. So quite a lot of energy is released in this cycle. Now let's move on to the second type of respiration and that is anaerobic respiration. So this is the process by which food substances are chemically broken down in the absence of oxygen. So anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. Now when it comes to the products of this type of respiration, they differ in plants and animals. So that means that you're going to have different products in animals as well as in plants, but with one similarity. In both cases, energy in the form of ATP is going to be formed. Our last bit, let us discuss the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Now, our first difference has to do with oxygen. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen, while anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. Next one, where do the two processes take place? Aerobic respiration occurs in the cell cytoplasm as well as in the mitochondria. Anaerobic respiration only occurs in the cell cytoplasm. Next one, what about the products that are formed? Now, aerobic respiration leads to the formation of three products energy in the form of ATP, carbon four oxide, and water. Anaerobic respiration, on the other hand, leads to the formation of different products in plants and animals. So in animals, you're going to have lactic acid and ATP. In plants, you're going to have carbon four oxide, ethanol, and ATP. Moving on to our last bit. In aerobic respiration, you're going to have high amounts of energy being produced, specifically 38 molecules of ATP. Why? Because the substrate, which is the food substance, is completely broken down. So this is a very efficient way of obtaining energy. Anaerobic respiration, on the other hand, you're going to have incomplete breakdown of the substrate. So the substrate is just going to be partially broken down. Now, as a result, you're going to have a lower amount of energy, specifically two ATP molecules. And therefore, this is an inefficient method of obtaining energy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this lesson.